In today's episode, I will be showing you how to get to the moon. Specifically, uh, we will talk about researching nodes, we will talk about uh, building a vehicle, and we'll talk about getting there. We will not be landing on the moon, just orbiting the moon. So, first I'm going to be researching the general construction, and as you can tell, uh, we will be researching, of course, the flight control, and I'm thinking electrics. So we will research the flight control, and we will be researching a little bit more, I think, electrics, because I'll need the batteries for it. We have 90, so we have we can unlock one node. Uh, guys, the purpose of this series is actually for me showing you how to get to the moon, or for, for how to do various things in KSP, from research then building and then flying all the way until things are done. Previous episode was about getting to orbit and all the stuff in the science save that you needed to do to, to get to orbit. And this one will be getting to the moon's orbit and returning back safely, including landing. So I'm actually thinking that the fuel systems might be actually a little bit more important to get in terms of research because that gives us fuel lines, which means we can do asparagus staging and whatnot. So we're going to take that. So. Also, we're going to be taking the P re-entry module because it can house two Kerbals and for the reasons that I'm about to show you. Two Kerbals means we can take a pilot and also a scientist who can reset the one-time experiments, meaning that we can actually get more data. Then we will be taking this capsule that we have here and that will be picking up all the glorious science from all the experiments. So as you can tell, I'm putting a boatload of science, but I'm all, all, all experiments I'm putting just one, because I don't need more. Uh, right, so let's put in uh, some small reaction wheels, which we have, okay, the mystery good containment unit, other experiments, the drogue chute, which will be slowing down from the, you know, moon velocities. Uh, we have the materials bay underneath, and we will, we have a little bit of uh, batteries, which we're gonna be placing right about there. Okay, they're clipping in. I, I don't like that. Uh, yeah, that, that looks a little bit better. Yeah, all right. Okay, so we have batteries because uh, I have to put a lot of batteries because we don't have solar panels yet. So that's the reason for me putting a lot of batteries and we will be going all the way to, you know, to moon. So we have to think about that. There we go. We were, we're going to be putting the terrier engine. We need do not need to concern ourselves with the landing, just basically orbital insertion, being in orbit, doing the science, and get, then getting back. Then we're designing the ascent stage, which you can see here, and we're going to use it with our old, tr old trusty swivel. Uh, what I'm looking for is around 6,000 delta V, 6.23. So, but I, as always, I might over-engineer it by a large margin, so for, sorry if that happens, but let's see. Uh, all right, so. What we're going to do is we have now a total of 3.9 thousand Delta V and I was even thinking to do the lander here, but then I realized I don't have exactly all the nodes that I would like to do. So uh, I rather than, you know, putting these thuds, uh, which would actually reduce my Delta V significantly, I figured, nah, we're going to go for the orbit alone. All right. So then we're going to be putting the radial decouplers and then we're going to be putting the fuel tanks. Uh, I could be putting... Oh, wait, I have these. Okay, so yeah, these actually fit in with the design of the capsule. So I'm going to take two or maybe even I'm going to take four, maybe. Maybe four could be actually better. So let's see. We put like this. That would be, give us 5.4 thousand meters delta V. Well, that's still not ideal. And I'm actually thinking I, I'm, I would much rather take four. So let's go with four. All right. Four, yeah, four should be enough. Let's see. Uh, now we're gonna teach you the asparagus staging. I'm actually just putting fuel lines from one tank to another, and then from the another one to the central stage. And the reason will be I will be dropping the these booster tanks in pairs. First things first, let's put the fins so make we make sure that everything is stable. And now we're gonna be fixing our staging. Actually, launch clamps. There we go put it down and now let's talk staging auto strutting is of course a mandatory part of everything what we do and right so first we will be dropping the pair that is on the left and the right hand side so i'm actually selecting those decouplers and those rocket separation motors to fire at the same time then the second pair will you know leave this and then uh, the central stage will ignite all right 
Then I'm putting all of my experiments to uh, basically a custom group one. So when I press one, all the experiments will execute at the same at the same time. And when I press two, I will be taking the um, I will be collecting the science. So it's a very easy to do the science later on. And as you can tell, my delta v is 6.183. This is something that I was hoping to get right. Also. One more thing that we need to think about. Oh, hold on. I have only four engines lighting. There should be five. Okay, so you should go down there, Sunny. Yes. All right. And one more thing we have to put in the scientist. So Jebediah and Bob. And here we are launching our thrust to weight. I'm trying to maintain around 1.8. And as you can see, now you will see the benefits of asparagus staging. So that means that once we drop the empty tanks, all the other tanks will be completely full. So the fuel is feeding from these two that we have just dropped to the other two boosters that remain, which are feeding in again to the main stack. So as we are burning propellant, there's always a rocket that's fully fueled once we drop the stage. So as you can tell, we are raising our apoapsis towards 20, thrust weight is around 2, which is a little bit high-ish. So I sometimes, you know, just throttle down a little bit to make sure that my... I'm not combating the atmosphere too hard. All right, apoapsis height going up to 45, and now we can actually pitch a little bit more down. We have dropped the other two boosters, and look, another central stage is full. That was the whole idea behind the asparagus staging. So we're dropping pairs that are empty, and the other two are remaining. So, uh, our apoapsis is coming around 90 kilometers. At 100, I'm gonna cut the engines and prepare for the maneuver node to circularize. You guys are watching this in two times acceleration because I think you can still follow and I wanted to keep this episode somewhere around 20 minute mark so that you guys can still, you know, follow, enjoy, see what I'm doing, but it doesn't take too long of a time. Right, so there we go. Uh, now we are pointing, uh, we're doing the science because material study and the, I think, mystery goo had still some science to be done. Good. Now when I press 2, everything will be collected in the uh, science capsule. All right, let's do the burn and the burn will be a total of 850 and we have more than 3000, which should be more than enough to get us... I mean, in theory, it could be maybe even enough to get us landed on the moon, but the moon has significant gravity, meaning that we will have to fight its pull. So that's why I never designed this craft to be a lander. No, we will do that probably in the next episode that you will probably, if I manage to record it at this point, you will see it in the top right corner at the end screen if you watch the episode all the way to the end. Uh, all right, let go, board. So now we're going to be resetting. Bob Kerman is out and he's a scientist. So first we pressed the two to get all the experiments result into the, you know, the uh, science chamber. And now I'm just gonna go and restore the experiment. So that's the benefit of be bringing two Kerbals, one of which is the scientist. Jeb, of course, flies the uh, craft. And uh, now let's b make a maneuver node. So the idea of the maneuver node, you want it to be placed where the moon rises over the Kerbin. So, and in theory, we have already passed that burn. So I'm gonna flip it for one orbit further. So let's do it on the next orbit in 32 minutes. All right, so. There we go, and I'm now trying to reduce the moon periapsis while still retaining the least amount of uh, delta V required. So what I'm actually trying to do, I'm just trying to find a perfect spot where we can actually get a very nice insertion with minimum requirements. There we go. 828, let's just uh, finagle with it a little. All right, so after tweaking, uh, we have landed at the periapsis of 518 kilometers, and then I will probably be circularizing thereabouts. So the burn is 830 meters per second. We're just pointing the craft prograde, and then we shall be starting the burn in five, four, three, two, one, ignition. We will burn through the entire fourth stage and we shall burn through one portion of the third stage as well. So this is not going to be a flyby, it's going to be a full moon orbit. And probably the, the idea what I'm hoping to get, I'm hoping to get the science from 
uh, space high. We haven't gotten the materials base science from the space high above Kerbin. And also to get space high and space low uh, from the moon, all the experiments. So that's my goal. And that should give us a healthy lump of science to be able to advance our career onwards. So let's enjoy the cinematic. By the way, you get to the cinematic view by pressing F2 to hide the UI. And then you can enjoy as we beautifully leave this curve. And I really love the astronomer's visual pack. It looks amazing. Okay, so at this point, I'm guessing that we are in space high. So see, material study gave us a lot of science, temperature and even mystery goo gave us some science. So right now I press number two, which means that we have collected all of the experiments once again in that capsule, doing a little bit of EVA of resetting and restoring the experiments with Bob and then boarding back and we are on our route back, or sorry, on route to the moon. Gorgeous, right? I really love the cinematic shots. Where's the moon? And we are approaching it. There we go. All right. Uh, the time will automatically slow down once you get into the moon's sphere of influence. So you don't need to worry about that. And right now I'm plotting the periapsis to be at around 11 or 12,000 meters. Because that will net us a uh, moon low, you know, in space low above moon. So there we go. I just want to point my rocket maneuver prograde or actually I might point it like this so I could I take a screenshot and let's do the science. Okay. Materials, crew report, temperature scan, atmospheric pressure scan, mystery goo observation. Good. Okay. Get it all into the science capsule. Then we do the EVA report. Good. And then we're going to be restoring these experiments. Come on. We restore you as well. Good. Wonderful. And get in, Bob. Board. There we go. All right. So turning the maneuver prograde and uh, let's do, see if we can do another crew report. Yeah, crew report. Okay, crew report was already present there. All right. There we go, and we are accelerating until our burn, which is supposed to be in 10 minutes. So with accelerated time, we have to be careful. Or you could just press the green uh, markers that say next to 294 meters per second. I completely forgot about that. So, yeah. All right, so what you want to do, you want to be burning at 294 meters per second. We have a total of 1000, so we have more than enough, actually. I was just checking the state of my, you know, batteries, and they seem to be holding up pretty well. All right, 2.6. There we go. I think that's good enough. And if you we observe, we have a periapsis of 11,000 meters. So what we're going to do now is we are going to add another maneuver node. And I was actually thinking of even landing. What, how much delta V would it take us to land? That would be 260. Counting with also, you know, uh, with the combating the atmosphere. So I was thinking maybe I could pull it off, but I think it would be a little bit on the tight spot. So all in all, I decided I'm, I'm probably not going to do it. But regardless, I'm going to go to the maneuver node so I can get some, you know, in space low science. There we go. Hitting everything. Space near the moon, storing the experiments and then resetting them with Bob. EVA report. Also, we have to do that one manually. Restore this guy and we need to restore the other guy. Hold on. Uh, actually, I'm... I'm thinking I'm probably not going to do the burn. So yeah, actually, I'm not going to do the burn. I was trying to think, should I do it? Should I not do it? I even posted a quick save, but I figured, you know what? The, the, the mission for here is an actually orbiter. So rather than actually landing. So yeah. All right. Let's board. There we go. And we need to we just needed to collect the experiments which we have put in here. So restore. There we go. And Bob, get in. All right. So that gives us in space low. 
and that was in space low above Midland. So I'm actually reduced further the apoapsis in the hopes of getting some more in space low. And I'm thinking maybe in space low above the this crater that you can see over here. Highlands, Midlands, come on, come on. Far side crater. Okay, let's see if we can get any more science. Material study, blah, blah. All right. Yeah, most of them are duplicates, but EVA report, we know that it's not. So we're going to take EVA report. And... Yeah, sorry for a little bit skippage, but I'm gonna go and take a selfie now because, well, it's that time. It's the time where we take selfie and where I tell you that likes will make sure that Bob gets home safely. Yeah, not threatening or anything, they just motivate the pilot to do a better job, you know. After all, I'm just Eastern European, yeah, it doesn't matter, whatever. Alright, so, uh, board, good. Fine, uh, a lot of them are duplicates, but now let's actually prepare for the maneuver node to get our two Kerbals safely back to Kerbin. So we have picked up a science, as I told you, I'm not min-maxing everything. I know some of you will probably say, ground forks, you could have gone into the polar orbit and then get every ounce of that delicious science. I could have. But the purpose of this tutorial is actually to show you simple steps at the beginning, and I'm going to elaborate a lot more in, in the coming episodes, but... This is only the second episode where I'm showing basically how to get to the moon and actually do some science. So I think the next episode will be landing on the moon and then probably after that we'll be looking at Minmus and whatnot. Minmus is actually even easier to land than the moon, but uh, the moon is, uh, it requires an extra step which requires some learning. So there we go. Okay, EVA report doing some science and now what we're gonna do we're gonna review the report yes and uh, we're getting ready for the burn three two one go okay so usually it's a good practice if you swap to the map view when doing those burns because you have a better uh, control over what your periapsis is gonna be so see there we go 31 kilometers. Beautiful. All right. And now what we can do is we can enjoy the cinematic leaving of the moon by our orbiter and getting back into the Kerbin sphere of influence, which will be happening as soon as we get the hell out of Dodge. All right. Crossing the sphere of influence. Note how the time skip stopped, which is actually very, very nice. And now we are getting into the atmosphere, which means we will be re-entering shortly. So we want to orient retrograde and we have 745 meters per second, which we're going to use to decelerate, actually. We don't have to. We have the heat shield. However, I think it's always a good idea because that means less, you know, burning and less chance that some things blow. So, yeah. I always use the remaining fuel just to slow us down as much as possible when re-entering the atmosphere. Jeb and Bob are looking happy, and why would they not be? Okay, detaching the booster, and now I have accelerated four times for your convenience, because this is a repetitive part that get, kind of gets boring. So, there we go. Popping up the drogue chute first, then I'm going to cut the chute, allow for a free fall, and popping up the main chutes, meaning that, yeah, all in all... I would call this a very, very successful, you know, flight to the moon orbit. So the only thing that remains to be seen is once we splash down, how much science did we get? Before I basically say, thank you very much for watching. Look at that, 480 science in total we have. Beautiful. So you guys know what to do. Like if you like the episode, hit subscribe for more and more will be coming. Top right corner. I'll see you in the next one. This is Groundworks signing off.